Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And the reason why I say good morning, Holy Spirit is because in our neck of the woods, it is good morning. But in your neck of the woods, it may be good morning, good evening, or good night. Sophie and I are back again with you once again with a word from on high, with a right now word, with a word from God Almighty. Let's pray. Father God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Everything. Everything belong to you. All the glory belong to you. Sophie and I are glad, terrific, and thrilled to be back again in the land of the living. Praise be to God. And we give the Lord Jesus Christ the glory. Hallelujah. We thank God for the precious Holy Spirit. We thank God for his spiritual beings, his angels. And we are so grateful. Hallelujah. 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 Back again, as I said, with a right now word. Glory, 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 glory. Today, 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 with the aid of the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about some golden nuggets and however the Lord would lead, not necessarily in this order, but we're going to talk about some golden nuggets and something special on my heart. Then we're going to talk about uh, some... Uh, from if it be a title or if it be a lesson, we're going to go over in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Spiritual gifts. Verses 3 to 21. Spiritual, uh, spiritual gift verses 3 to 21. Now, we spoke once, once time about uh, out of Ephesians chapter 4, around the 11th verse, uh, the fivefold ministry, some scholars tell us, call them the fourfold ministry because they put the pastor and the teacher together. And then we also talked about out of the book of First Corinthians, spiritual gifts, because it's a lot of spiritual gifts, part one and part two. But we're going down deeper in the Word of God with the aid of the Holy Spirit, and these are more spiritual gifts. That's why I say Rome is not built in a day. And you have to, uh, and then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We give you steak to chew on. Uh, this is a lifelong study of the word of God. And that's why you have to take your time. This is not a regular book I keep saying. It's not a, a Swahili Bible, not an English Bible, and we give you parables, and we break down uh, uh, things that we uh, understand, and a, a line upon line, here a little, there a little, and we tell you the meaning, what the true meaning of Scripture says. Not what my denomination said, 
unless they are rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, uh, if, if, if that's what I think it means, it ain't what you think. It's what the Hebrew or the Aramaic or the Greek mean what is being written about, what the subject is about, who he's speaking to, and what they're talking about. You have to be called by God to be able to teach this where you might hit it and miss. <laughs> Did you hear me? I say you might hit it and miss. God sent his ministers and Satan sent his too. You'll get it sometime by tomorrow. Now, are you with me? Let me tell you something else too. God want to I hope you praying for me and praying with me. I'm standing on the wall today, today, today. I'm standing on the wall for God to drop down some golden nuggets that we will go higher in the spirit to take us from one place to another. Some of you say level to level. But I want to go to dimensions that we will teach others in the body of Christ in these last and evil days. Because the devil is raging. Did you hear me? So I'm standing on the wall and I'm on the mountain top. I'm on the mountain top and I am a gatekeeper. That's why God give me these understanding and other word of God that I would bring forth the word and rightly divide the word of truth that we may live, did you, are you listening to the old man, I, that we may live these golden nuggets and be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. I'm in the book. I hope you in the book. Listen. I want to give honor today to my spiritual father, Bishop, Apostle, Michael Wagura, First Love, Pentecostal Church in Nairobi, Kenya. Then I want to give honor and a shout out to Pastor Rose, all the ministers, all the Pastors, all the evangelists, all the deacons, all the missionaries, and whatever title you may hold, be about your father business. And then, Sophie and I want to give a shout out and love to our family there in Nairobi, Kenya. The blessings we are sending blessings, the Abrahamic blessings and the blessings of God upon your life. And baby sister, we send a special blessings upon your life. Speak the word only. And then in Charlotte, North Carolina to our family, keep on doing the perfect will of God. That's what I said. Not his permissive will. Whatever you want to do. A little dab won't do you. In the name of Jesus. And then all of my rest of my family. I'm talking to your daughter, Kathleen. And the rest of my family in 
the U.S. of A. and all around the world, we send the blessings. We speak blessings upon you. We ban everything that's not of God. All sickness, all diseases, there is no lack in your life. Speak the word only. Don't speak the circumstances. Okay? You see the circumstances. Speak with Speak like God, talk like God, act like God, be like God. You his child, if you're born again. And if you're not born again, you must be born again. Did you hear what I said? If you're not born again, you must be born again. To walk like God. To be like God. <laughs> and to do like God. Oh Lord have mercy. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready to go into some word. I feel like teaching the word. I feel like teaching something today. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the power of God. The angels are moving. This is your day. Stand on this word. Don't feel nothing. Don't like nothing. The day is your day. No matter what heaven happened. No matter what. Don't, don't, don't. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. The day is your day. I don't care if the doctor didn't do what he's supposed to do. Just stand there and just start thanking God that it's already done. You already received what, what, what you desire. And just keep on thanking God anyway. And trust Him. And the manifestation. I see it has taken place. The money is there. The new home is there. The car is there. The grades that is there in school. The healing is already there. You already made whole. That grandson is at home out of prison. That daughter is out of prison. John is home. That girl is at home. Lemaeus is at home. So Lita is made whole and her grandson. Oh Jesus, come on God, I, I hear you. Let me go, I gotta go on. We have still another incident recorded in Acts chapter 19, verse one through six. And it happened while Apollos was in at Corinth that Paul had passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said unto John baptism, then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, 
the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. If receiving the Holy Spirit was something that happened automatically when you were saved, Paul would not have asked the disciples, I mean these disciples, did you receive the Holy Spirit uh, when you believe? The answer the disciples gave him is at, uh, of what had happened uh, in many denominations today. We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. As Paul pointed out in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The reason most people do not believe in receiving the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues is because they cannot believe it. The reason they cannot believe it is that they do not have any faith for it. And the reason they do not have any faith for it is they, that they have never heard what the words say about it. In all five of these passages of scripture, we have seen illustrations of people receiving the Holy Spirit. In three of these examples, it is very clearly and concisely pointed out that when people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues. And in the other two passages, we read there is circumstantial evidence to prove this happened in their situations as well. Therefore, there is no reason to doubt that when people are filled with the Spirit today, that they should speak with other tongues as they their spirit give them utterance. Their spirit give them utterance. Two kinds of tongues. One mistake many people make is to include speaking with tongue in the same category as the gifts of different kinds of tongues. One of the nine gifts of the Spirit recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. They are not the same manifestation, yet people and churches still use the excuse as a way to get out of doing what the Word of God declares. We read early that the gifts of the Holy Spirit is available to every believer and that people in the Bible receive that gift. They invertibly spoke with other tongues. Another scripture that confirmed this is Mark chapter 16 verse 17. When Jesus said, and these signs will follow those who believe, and my name will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. The sign Jesus mentioned will include speaking with tongues should follow every believer. When it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, Paul write in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, disputing to each one individually as he will. In other words, the gifts come only through whom and to whom the Holy Spirit manifests them for the profit of the individual or group of individuals he is addressing. Not everyone will have these manifestations. However, everyone will, I mean, everyone who is filled with the Spirit can and should speak with other tongues. Another scripture that is misconstrued when it comes to speaking with tongues is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 and 30. Verse 28, And God has appointed these in the church. church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then, gifts of healings. Helps administration, verities of tongues. Verse 29, 
Are all apostles? You know the answer to that. Are all apostles? You know the answer to that. Are all teachers? You know the answer to that. Are all workers of miracles? You know the answer to that. Verse 30. Do all have gifts of healing? You know the answer to that. Do all speak with tongues? You know the answer to that. And do all interpret it? You know the answer to that. And when they say, do all speak with tongues, that's talking about the gifts of tongues. But you don't have a study Bible. Most of you don't. And the whole church don't have no study Bible. And they don't study to show that they don't rightly divide the word of truth and they don't have no concordia and they don't have no lexis and they don't have no uh 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 uh, uh strong strong concordance and all of this stuff so they don't know all of that they just listen to some preacher or some te somebody that or some deacon or something who he heard it from another deacon who he couldn't read and years and years and years and years and years of listening to the people who can't read. And I ain't trying to be funny. Let me move on. This is similar to a passage in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, which lists apostles, prophets, and evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These are the ministry gifts. Christ has placed in the body to edify and perfect the saints and to do the work of the ministry. They are not spiritual gifts. They are offices. Moving on. Here in 1 Corinthians, Paul lists only three of these five offices by their category name. He lists the other two offices by their functional names, by the spiritual gifts that should be in operation in those ministries. The term administration referred to the pastor because the pastor is the head of the local church and the under shepherd under Jesus. The great shepherd. I'm in the book, y'all. The gift of help and diversities of tongues also related to this office. Paul asks, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? And that ain't no teacher in school either. Are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Mama operated in the gifts of healing. I didn't say lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is the gift of healing. Do all speak with tongues? That's talking about the gifts of tongues, I said. Do all interpret it? That's the gifts. Just listen. The answer to all those questions is of course not. No. That's not the prayer language that every Christian can receive the gift of I mean to the gift to pray to their heavenly language. That is, I mean to their heavenly father. You well, that you can pray to your heavenly father to pray to him and he know what you saying and you know what he I mean he know what you saying but the devil don't know what you saying and you don't know what you saying unless God get you the interpretation that's not the prayer language to your heavenly father you know you got a, a language to your heavenly father you got a language uh, you got a language that you pray to your heavenly father you got the, the you got these other tongues that they are known tongues on the earth. The gifts of tongues uh, 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 is a different ball game. I told you everybody can't teach this Bible. They think they can. 
but they can't. Mm. They put it all together in a salad, like I told you once before, and throw it up. They think they know something. They don't know nothing. The answer to all those questions is, of course not, because not every one is called into the fivefold ministry, but I am. But some people use this passage to prove not everyone has to speak with tongues, because they don't know what they're talking about. That's the gifts of tongues, but it don't tell you that in every Bible. That is dishonest, and is, and in the context of these verses, is not scripturally true either. There are several reasons we should speak with tongues. Paul instructs in First Corinthians chapter fourteen two. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, chapter two. Listen carefully. For he who speak in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. See? See? That's why people get confused. It is tongues that you speak in other people's languages. But what did this just say? See? This is a different tongue. Watch this. For he who speak in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. See, that's why you got to rightly divide the word of God. For no one understand him, how be it in the spirit, he speak mystery. Now that he's speaking to God. He's not speaking to me around here. He's speaking to God. This is not Japanese or Swahili. He's speaking to God. Rightly divide the word of truth. All of y'all know how to teach. He added in the fourth verse of the same chapter, he who speak in tongue edify, build up himself. If you want to get into the spirit or if you want to build yourself up and make yourself strong in the spirit, you can do so by speaking in tongue. Now, listen, I didn't make that verse up right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. That doesn't say nothing about speaking to different people in different languages that they understood to each other. They say something about speaking to God, didn't it? Instead of this, this, this Bible yourself. And see, do I, am I telling the truth? I ain't make that up now. You can't read this Bible like a 747 real fast. You probably ain't even paid it no attention. Because you've been listening to them. <laughs> the people ain't been telling you the truth. They put everything together. It's not together. Listen, still another reason in, in, in stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 and 15, Paul say this, watch this, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit pray. My what pray? My spirit, not his mind pray. His spirit pray, not his mind. What pray? His spirit pray. But my understanding is unfruitful. No understanding. Until he asks God for some understanding. Or what it be what it means. Look at verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I just told you, but watch this. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will also pray with the understanding. What he say? He will pray with the understanding too, because he asked God what's up. What it means. I will sing with the Spirit. Did you know you could sing in the Spirit? One time I didn't know it. And I will sing with the understanding. Ask God what I'm singing about in the Spirit. 
I used to hear my daddy in the back room with a little boy singing in something language. It wasn't English. It wasn't English. And he was speaking in a, another language. Ah. It wasn't. He didn't even go to church. But he know that Bible like the back of his hand. I think he was running. Not not think. He was running from God. I know he was. Then it dropped down on me. Speaking with tongues is the prayer language of your creative spirit. It is essential, a hotline to the Heavenly Father, one the devil cannot tap and one that is not limited as your mind can be by vocabulary or education. Through it, you can fully express yourself to the Father which can make your personal prayer and worship time all the more intimate, special, and rewarding. Listen to the old man. There are different types of tongues. Did you hear the old man? I'm going to say it again. You might think you knew it. There are different types of tongues. Tongues of angels, tongues of men, tongue of God. Am I right about it? <laughs> Rightly divide the word of truth. I pray I'm giving you steak today. Chew on it softly. Get you some water or some Kool-Aid. Hold on and ride. You heard me right. I'm feeding you today. I'm feeding you nothing but the word of God. And in the name of my ministry that I'm a part of, when I say mine, that I'm a part of God ministry is speak the word only. The name of this ministry is speak the word only. And I am that I am by the grace of God. I say I am that I am by the grace of God. I feel like preaching and teaching something today with the aid of the Holy Spirit. I feel the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you can take that to the bank. Yeah, let's go to it, the lesson. Let's go over to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Spiritual gifts. Some more spiritual gifts. Starting at verse 3. Are you with me? I pray that you're with me. Ha <laughs> ha. Verse 3. For I say, this is the great Paul, Apostle Paul. For I say, through the grace given unto me. Paul, a partnership, apostleship given by the grace of God in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. To every man who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Israel had fallen, and the reason at least in part was because of, of this very thing, prideful, unscriptural of themselves. I know where I get my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It is not because how smart R.D. is because of the Holy Ghost who dropped down in my spirit, man, and give me this understanding that I have, that I may live by, and then I give it to you. So all honor and all glory and all praise belong to God. You better believe it. 
but to think soberly, not high-minded, as some do, is that some of these pastors and prophets and evangelists and apostles do, they don't give God the glory. And that's their business, though. And let me say that again. But to think soberly, according to God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And that's talking about if you're born again. And I done already took you over in feet that all men have not faith. That's why you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Who was he talking to? What was he talking about? You understand? So that doesn't mean everybody have, they have earthly faith, like they can go to that job and get a paycheck, I'm gonna get a check and all of that. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the God kind of faith. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm in the book. I hope you in the book. So it's talking about the believer. It's talking about this is given by the Holy Spirit when you got born again at conversion. Is that good enough for you? I, mean, I ain't upset. I feel like teaching something today. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, that's why we call the body of Christ, but it's many members. You with me? And all members have not the same office. They don't function the same. Are you with me? I told you I'm ready to teach this thing today. Verse 5. So we being many are one body in Christ. Okay? And every one member one of another. Now listen. In effect, say that every let me say that again. In, in effect, say that whatever is true according to one is also true according to uh, others. This does not speak of offices, but rather being a member of the body. It's talking about the body of Christ. Okay? We are the body of Christ. In particular, a born again believer. Are you with me? Now, verse 6 Having then gifts difference, differing according to the grace that is given to us, it speaks of different gifts or offices. Those fivefold ministry. Is offices, evangelist, pastor, those offices. Alright? Everybody is not in the fivefold ministry. Teachers, prophets, apostles, you know. Look at him. Whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. It has to do with the measure of faith. The faith that you have. And then you know your faith can grow. How? One way it can grow is faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You can hear it by listening to uh, uh, ministers like me teaching. You can hear about tapes, uh, television, radio. You can hear about other uh, mothers and fathers who teaching you, you know, things like that. Reading books, right? Things like that. But faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's a daily thing. It's not what you heard 10 years ago. Faith doesn't come like that. That's not, we're not made up like that. Okay? Now, verse 7. Or ministry. Ministry is one who serves. So I tell one of my aunts all the time, you're a minister because you serve the people. 
when they come to your house, your location. You understand? Let us wait on our ministering. It would have been better uh, translated, let us minister according to the proportion of our faith. Or he who teach on teaching, it carries the same idea. It is a wise man who stay within the spheres of service which God, the Holy Spirit, has fitted him and does not uh, invade some other field of service for which he is not fitted. Stay in your lane. Do what God called you to do. You have more than one gift now. You just may not know what it is at the time, but you'll find it out. Just do the... Uh, uh, Don used to say, whatever you find your hands to do, do it. I ain't know what he was talking about there. What you talking about? Find whatever you find your hands to do, do it. Different things in the church. Just don't... Uh, 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 just do too much. They used to ask you, you know, be having people do a whole lot of stuff, you'll burn out, you know. Don't overdo a lot of stuff within the church, but you know, if you ushering and, and, and you don't know what your gifts is, and you know, you want to be an usher, you own the youth uh, choir, you know, singing and stuff like that, or you're playing the drums or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But then God, uh, later on, you might find yourself preaching or teaching the Sunday school class, or, 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 or you might have a, a, a what, what they call it, a uh, uh, youth uh, where you preach church service for the youth. Like that. Different things like that. You with me? I, I believe you with me now, right? Verse 8. Or he who exalt. You be building people up on exaltation. He who give. My, 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 my aunts, they look special one. Boy, she deep in giving. Let him who do it with simplicity, he proclaim giving as a gift or an office. So you know you walking in an office when you give. That's an office. Everybody don't have that office. See, you didn't even know it was an office, did you? Because the pastor didn't tell you, did he? He might didn't even know. See, he who rule with diligence, a position of authority. He who show mercy with cheerfulness. The Holy Spirit say that this is a gift as well. See, these are most, the, we, we, we talk, what we talking about? We talking about spiritual gifts. These are some more spiritual gifts that, the, you may have heard of. That's why I'm there. Verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Let it be real, not hypocritical. And, and hold that which is evil. Stay away from it. The Christian is to express his hatred of evil by a withdrawal from it. So stay away from uh, 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 evil stuff. Cleave to that which is good. Okay? Now, number 10. Be kindly, affectionately one to another with brotherly love. You know, that, that gothy love and stuff that I talk about. In honoring, in honor, preferring one another. You love each other. Let verse 11. Not scornful in business. Must be done with fervent, fervently. Uh, responsibility. F uh, fervor in spirit. Serving the Lord. Serve Him in everything we do. Right? In everything we do. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Because you're going to have tribulation. 
to remain under the test in a God-honoring manner, not seeking to escape it, because you're going to go through some tribulations. Constantly, instant in prayer. Stay in prayer. Thirteen, distributing to the necessities of the faith, of the saints. Let me do that again. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Be a generous uh, generosity. Pertain to certain generosity. Give to hospitality. Be kind towards strangers. You don't know one scripture say you might be entertaining angel. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. And be talking all that crazy talk. Bless and curse not. Okay? That's plain. I don't have to go all into it. Verse 15. Rejoice with them who do rejoice. And weep with them who weep. Okay, verse 16. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high thing, but consent to men of low estate. If they don't have nothing, treat everybody the same. If they homeless or whatever. Treat everybody the same. Be not wise in your own consent. Number seven, seven, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Do the right thing. Verse 18. If it be possible as much as lie in you, live peaceable with all men. The believer has no control over the conduct of others. How they may act. Try to live peaceable with all men. But some people it's hard to live with. So you may have to live with them with a long handle spoon. But try. Then 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. But rather give place unto wrath. Speaks of God wrath. And means to leave room for it. And not take God proper work out of your out of his hand. Why? For it is written, Vengeance is mine's, I will repay, say the Lord, in Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse eighteen. God will take care of it. Somebody just keep on doing you wrong and doing you wrong and keep on doing stuff. God will fight your battle for you. You better believe it. In verse in verse twenty. Therefore, if your enemy hungry, hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. We should treat our enemy with goodness. For in so doing, if in, for why? The reason why. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire. On his head. Did you see that? I done did that before. Over. Let me tell you this quick testimony. I had a guy that came to my house. He had did all kind of things to me. Now I know I shouldn't have did this. What I did. I took him in mama house. She had cooked all that food out. Pulling all that food out and stuff. I pulled all that food out. She had all baked them cakes and pies and stuff. He was in there eating. He wasn't scared of nothing. He's, he, he, he's deceased now, bless his So He started crying and everything. And ho I said, what's wrong with you? I didn't see what he saw. He didn't believe in angels and God and nothing that. I said, oh, you see that angel that... His head is touching, they're about to touch the roof. He got all of them uh, 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 things across his chest like he's been in the war and stuff. And he's walking back and forth and he got that big sword in his hand. His eyes are like fiery red and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him. I'm scared of him. Please let me out of there. Like a little kid, he was holding me in the back of my back. 
I got him out of there. He got out there in the middle of the street. I say, please come back in here with me. Father, you ain't getting no dessert and stuff. He ain't never come back to mama's house again. We seen each other out in the street, but he ain't never come back in mama's house again. So I know this word by experience. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Verse 21. Be not overcome of evil. Don't meet evil with evil, which only bred more evil. But overcome evil with good, and that is true. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Now let's go to some golden nuggets. The first golden nugget, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Golden nuggets. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believe, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Did you understand that? Shout about it, somebody. Then the second golden nuggets in in Acts. Okay, Acts, chapter thirteen. Okay, Acts chapter 13 and verse 2 through 4. Acts chapter 13, 2 through 4. As they ministered to the Lord and fastened, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit can talk. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit can talk. And they ministered to the Lord and fastened. The Holy Spirit said. They was worshiping. Separate. Me. Barnabas. And Saul. For the work. Whereunto I have called them. He expressed a strong command in other words. It is not a suggestion. The Lord does the calling, not man. So he wanted Barnabas and Saul at this time to get together and do some ministry together. Later on, he was with uh, uh, another man. But anyway, you go through this book of Acts, you'll see the different people Paul was with, ministering and stuff. Timothy, the young boy, he called it his son, his son, and on and on and on. Paul and Silas was in prison singing. You remember that? But anyhow. And then, I ain't finished, that verse 2. Moving on to verse 3. And when they had fasted and had fast and prayed and laid their hands on them. Now the early church was a praying church. It is a shame that the same cannot be said for the modern church. It signified the blessings of the church upon Paul and Barnabas. They sent them away. This was their first missionary trip. And then to go plant new churches. And then verse 4 say, So they being sent forth by the Holy Spirit, they departed unto Sir Saluda, a Sir Saluda, Sir Salusali, a Salusila, and from they they sailed to Cy Cyprus, 
and that's what they did and their journey was a, approximately a hundred miles this was uh, and Cyprus was the boyhood home of, of Barnabas where he no doubt still had many friends in Acts chapter 4 verse 36 I threw that in for fun. Then let's go to the next uh, golden nugget, which will be uh, Acts chapter 12. And Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. And Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 5, it says, um, Now about that time, King, now about that time, uh, Herod the king scratched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed. James the brother of John with the sword in verse 3 and because it, he saw it pleased the Jew he proceeded further to take Peter also he was going to kill Peter then were the days of unleavened bread in verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison this represents the third time Peter was arrested in Acts chapter 4 verse 3, chapter 5 verse 18 through 19. And it delivered him to, to uh, that means 16 soldiers to keep him. It intended after Easter to bring him forth to the people. It should have been translated intended after Passover. And then verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer. Did you hear me? But prayer was made without ceasing. That means without stopping. Around the clock. Of the church. Unto God. For him. It presents the greatest weapon at the church dispenser is prayer then you drop down to verse 7 and 8 and then verse 7 and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and it smoked or touched Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly angels can talk too and his chains fell off from his hand. And then verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird up yourself, and bind on your sandals, put them on. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast your garment about you, and follow me. Hallelujah. He told him to follow him. He's getting him out of there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he's the same God. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus changes. God changes not. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did then, he, he is doing now. He's a delivering God. He's a right now God. And all the blessings of God is upon you now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's go to Mark. Mark 11. Mark. 
Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answered, said unto them, talking to the disciples about that fig tree, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Be like God. I'm telling you, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have the same type of faith God have. That's what I'm telling you. Have the God kind of faith. And then drop it down to verse 23. For verily I say to you, that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, speak to the mountain, speak to it, don't climb it, speak to the mountain, your bills, anything that's hindering you, if you need a DBQ, whatever you need, speak to it. Did you hear what I said? Speak to it. Speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. Get out of my way. I need a DBQ. I need a so and so. And shall not doubt in your heart. But shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. And don't keep doubting. James says it's like a wave. You won't receive anything. You believe it when you pray. Huh? You believe it when you pray. Not after you pray. When you pray. Because when you pray is when you see it. What do you say? When you pray is when you see it. When do you see it? When you pray. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, what thing soever you desire, I desire that DBQ and whatever else. And, and y'all don't know what a DBQ is. I desire that car. I desire that dress. I desire that home. I desire my grandson home for prison. When? Now. And don't keep on bringing it up. Just thank God for it. What did it say? When you pray. When you desire. When you pray. Not after you pray. When you pray. Believe. Do what? Believe. That you receive them. And you shall have them. Do what? Believe. It's a right now thing. Not after. Now. Faith is now. Faith is when? Now. Faith is when? Now. Faith is when? Now. Take it to the bank. Because when you take it to the bank, you withdraw. Say what? I say when you take it to the bank, you withdraw what? Money. You got it, honey. Yeah. Let's go to Samuel. First Samuel chapter three. I'm almost finished. First Samuel first Samuel chapter three. First Samuel chapter three. Come on now. Go to the nuggets if you will. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter three verse 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 nineteen and Samuel grew he was young and the Lord was with him and did let and did let none of his words fall to the ground and none of my words fall into the ground will you let none of your words fall to the ground. Believe him. 
What did he say? Believe him. God is not a respecter of person. Where your faith at? Say what? I say where your faith at? Come boldly to the throne room of God. What did he say? I say come boldly to the throne room of God. You heard what I said. Come boldly to the throne room of God. Hallelujah. One more. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5. Verse 5. Listen to this carefully. If you make a vow and don't pay it, it's not good. So if you, most ministers won't tell you this. Don't make a vow if you're not going to keep it. What's a vow? Vow is something like this. I vow to pay $5,000. I'm going to pay $5,000 unto the ministry. If you think you can't keep it, just don't make it. And then, even if you don't have a certain time, you're going to finish. You didn't say you're going to do it within a year, two years, or three years. Just don't make it. Why? Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. Better is it that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. That's all I got to say on that. I don't care what man say. I care what the scriptures say. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 5. You can always ask God to forgive you. But when you know something, why do it? Just think about that. When you know something, why do it? Does that make sense? Think about it. Okay, Father God, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. I thank you that you have given something I write my word once again. You done blessed the people once again. You have saved people that they filled them with the pressure of the Holy Spirit. You have given them the desires of their heart, met their needs, and you given Sophie and I another word for next week. We thank you. We love you. We desire to give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. Now, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 13. If you believe that God sent Jesus on this earth plane to save sinners and you tell somebody you become born again. We believe in Acts chapter 2, 38 and you go under water and be baptized. You become born again. We believe that if you, you desire the prayer language to the Heavenly Father, you ask God in the name of Jesus and he'll give it to you. Whatever you desire from God, you ask him in the name of uh, Jesus, he'll do it for you according to his will. And his will is his word. So you must get in those golden nuggets, which is his word. We thank you, oh Father God, once again for a great word from on high. We bless you people. Have a great and powerful and blessing week and weekend until the next time when God Almighty will give self and I another word for you and I to live by. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen.